Hello. So I'm going to be looking at the question of do we really need vitamins and mineral supplements? And whilst I believe the answer to that is quite straightforward, the reasoning behind does require a little bit of explanation. So let's start by looking at what the body needs. And first of all, we need energy, which we derive through glucose metabolism. We also need a whole range of nutrients, and these nutrients we use for growth and repair of tissue. And in fact, we need 60 minerals and trace minerals. We need 16 vitamins. 12 amino acids and 3 essential fatty acids. So how do we actually get those? Well, we consume plants and animals and we derive our nutrients from those sources. The plants and animals get their nutrients through the foods that they, they take in and so the circle perpetuates. The conventional view is that we should be able to get all of our nutrients through the food that we eat. And the question is, is that really true? And we're going to explore that um, question right now. So if we go back to 1936, the US Senate commissioned a report on various agricultural issues including the predominance of soil nutrients. And what that report showed was that, and this is in 1936, that the land that plants were being grown on no longer contained enough minerals and in fact were starving the people of nutrients. The report also goes on to say that Roughly 99% of Americans were deficient in nutrients back in 1936. Now, we would assume that um, somebody would go out and do something about that. Well, let's see if they actually did. And let's go back to a report on the soil mineral depletion rates in 1992. This was at the Earth Summit held in Rio. Australia had 55% depletion of minerals. Europe 72, coming down to North America at 85. Now this is the depletion rates, not how much is actually left. So again, with these sorts of levels of depletion, you would hope that somebody would be doing something about it. So the last set of statistics that came out on this topic was in 2002. And as you can see, the figures are getting worse. In fact, North America is down to 97% depletion. Australia is at 71%. And the other countries are following suit. Back in 2002, reported in the American Journal of Medicine, or the Journal of American Medical Association, said that most people do not consume an optimum amount of vitamins by diet alone, and it appears prudent that we should probably be taking a vitamin and mineral supplement. So let's take a look at nutrient values of food, because whilst the soil depletion is an important component, what it actually translates to is what's in our food. So what I've done here is I've taken some basic mineral and vitamin components, these are pretty much essential ones. I've looked at the required or recommended daily intake, so this is what the boffins have set as being what we need to take in to sustain life, and I've listed those down here. So looking at the meat proteins, so I've taken chicken and beef as the most common forms of meat protein that we consume, and if we look at calcium alone, in 100 grams of, of beef, and that's about the size of your hand, there's 6 milligrams of calcium. Keep in mind that we want 1,000 milligrams a day. If you look at vitamin C, we're told we need 75 milligrams of vitamin C a day, yet there's none in beef or chicken. And if we look at folic acid, we need 400 international units. There is a trace of uh, folic acid in beef, and a trace means less than 0.1 of a milligram, and there's none in chicken. So let's look at our vegetable sources and see if that's any better. And I've taken three pretty common potatoes, tomatoes and broccoli as being the most common sorts of potato, uh, vegetables that we use. And if, again, if we look at calcium, calcium in 100 grams of potato, there is 9 milligrams. In tomato, there is 10, and in broccoli, that's quite high at 130 milligrams. But still a long way short of our 1,000 milligrams that require. Similarly with vitamin C, broccoli does have quite a lot of vitamin C, and you probably wouldn't need to supplement further with vitamin C if you were receiving 100 grams of broccoli. We also have these um, compounds that are known as superfoods and the most common one that we come across is spirulina and spirulina happens to be one of the most nutrient dense of the superfoods so let's see how that compares. Spirulina has got 110 milligrams of calcium per 100 grams. It has no vitamin C and it has 0 0.05 milligrams of folic acid. So the question is is this actually going to give us what we, we need in a daily situation? So let's break that down and just look at the calcium only. If we just look at the calcium and we look at consuming beef, we would need to consume 
16.6 kilograms or 36 and a half pounds of beef a day just to receive our calcium intake. If we were looking at tomatoes, we would need to consume 23 to 50 pounds, 23 kilos or 50 pounds. That's equivalent to 150 ordinary everyday normal sized tomatoes. And if we look at the superfoods, the spirulina particularly, you would need to consume one kilo, that's 2.2 pounds of powdered dried spirulina a day to receive your 1,000 milligrams of calcium. I'd like to just bring in the issue of uh, essential fatty acids at this point because essential means that they are, they have to be taken in by diet, we can't synthesize them. And the other issue with uh, fatty acids is that they communicate with the genes and they actually look at how we produce certain proteins and that's quite important. So if we take the most common source of uh, essential fatty acids which is the deep sea fish, so salmon, trout, tuna and so on, and we look at the recommended daily requirements for the various fatty acids, so omega-3, they're saying 1200 milligrams a day, omega-6 on the ratio of 1 to 1 is 1200 milligrams a day, DH a is 600 milligrams, EPA is 600 milligrams. And looking at that picture there of raw fish, you would say, well, okay, that's good. We actually would get that from 100, milligrams of 100 grams of fish. The problem is that when you cook fish, you denature the essential fatty acids and you lose up to 80% of the essential fatty acids. So your 1,200 milligrams comes down to 240 milligrams. So do dietary supplements offer an answer? The warning here is on these superfoods. Now whilst superfoods do provide a denser, richer content of various vitamins, minerals, enzymes and so on, so they do not necessarily provide us with the daily requirement of essential vitamins and minerals. So do vitamins and minerals offer the answer? Well the answer is of course yes. And the reason they do is that according to the independent research, they provide the building blocks for the essential components of life. They are important in providing the nutrition that the cells need to function normally. They provide protection from oxidative stress, that's the premature aging component that we all hear about. And they top up nutrient poor foods. The reality is though that vitamin and mineral supplements need to be taken in conjunction with a healthy whole diet.